Glory. 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 Oh, glory. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. Praise God, it's a good night to die. Yes, it's a good night to go home. But we have work to do. Amen? There are those who are called, chosen, and faithful. Amen? Thank you, Master. I have a message from the Lord. <laughs> it's a time release message. Glory. <laughs> First Peter chapter five. <laughs> For those of you that don't know Veggie Tales, you should. <laughs> There's a one called Jonah, and he's riding his camel, and he goes into Nineveh. And on the camel, he comes in, and he says, I have a message from the Lord. <laughs> Everybody was slapping each other with fish, you know, so we had to straighten the place up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse 5, let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, that means immature, submit yourselves to those who are mature, your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. In other words, respect one another. Amen? For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. See, the pride does not respect. Verse 6, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, things are going to come to pass as you cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. So don't hold on to that stuff. He says, be sober. Amen. In other words, be what? Alert. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Some people are having still a hard time with that. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour, steal, kill, and destroy. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so everybody's challenged the same in the areas. Amen? And, but may the God of all grace, after who has called us to his eternal glory, by Jesus Christ, ask you after you have suffered. Let me share a little bit about this suffered a while. It's called uncovering. In other words, after you've uncovered, after you've been uncovered, things that have been exposed, many of our shortcomings, strongholds, bondages, amen? They've been exposed. After you've suffered a while, that you may be perfect. Perfect, that means complete. Amen? Established, that means that you may focus also because so many times people's brains are going everywhere and they can't focus and that you may be strengthened that means given endurance and that you would be what settled immovable in other words you are positioned in Christ and nothing's going to move you you know who you are and your identity in Christ is solid In this, we know that the enemy comes to attack. And in this attack, one of the great things that happens to individuals, especially in the emotions, which we've talked about constantly, when we are attacked, especially emotionally or carry emotional stuff with us, what we have a tendency to do is what we call build sentimental boundaries. Sentimental. Mental. Mental. Think about that word sentimental. Sentimental. Why? Because they affect the mind. People holding on to sentimental things that are harmful to them. Sentimental memory, sentimental certain things, whatever it may be, memories, 
still holding on to sentimental pictures that are still harmful to them, trying to justify the good parts of it. But it's still an open door to the bad parts of it. Does everybody understand? You know, there, one of the things the Spirit said to me today, he says, you know, guy, he says, there are those who don't think they have demons and they do. And there are those who think they have demons and they don't. And I said, explain that, please. And he said to me, because of these sentimental boundaries that have been built, it's a, they also protect these sentimental things. So something's occurred in the life, amen? And a spirit might have manifested, but when those spirits removed because of that habit, emotionally, that person still thinks they have the spirit. And they really don't. So when there's a certain emotional level that it comes, that person acts out like a demon when it's really not. It's pure flesh. I found that very interesting. There are many people who think they have demons and they don't. It's just flesh. It's a habit of memory. It's a habit of emotion. One of the most emotional attachments the Lord said to me today that are destroying my people is called regret. He said we, they must learn how to overcome regret. When you think about e regret, every area of that uh, regret is always trying to be carried over into the new man or into the new life. Every one of us has regrets. Amen? Especially after you get saved and you look back and go, oh my God, what did I do? You know? But there's an area where regrets can bind an individual if they're not cut loose, severed, or you know the source of it. So every regret has emotions attached to them of people, places, and things. Regret is the number one harmful thing to each and every one of us, besides pride and stuff like that, which is also an emotion. Regret. Mistakes, failures, things. Regret. It opens the door to all kinds of stuff. We've, even bad habits are a fruit of regrets. I regret this or what they do to cover certain things. Is everybody okay? 2 Corinthians 4. Overcoming regret. So that means we've got to destroy some of these sentimental boundaries that are engulfing some of these regret emotions. Second Corinthians 4.16. It says, therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is what? Perishing. Yet the inward man is being what? Renewed day by day. In other words, it's progressing. There's that process of conversion and regeneration and sanctification. And the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, <laughs> is working for us a more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal light afflictions that are uncovered. These are uncovered emotions, which we call emotional attachments, that promote strongholds or memory lies. Remember, sentimental. It's emotional things that affect the mind. Sentimental things, they affect the mind. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some things that are good. That promote good things, but it must be the area where it's attached to glorifying Christ. Not things that attach or glorify yourself, your flesh, or your past. Sentimental things that glorify Christ. When people begin to realize that they start breaking these things off, oh, this is so sentimental to me. Is it a glorification towards Christ? Is it a process? Is it a part of living from the new life, from the future? To the pro if it's not, then it's a stronghold. 
Does everybody get it? Oh, happy days. Uh, chapter 3, 2 Corinthians 3. Somebody there? I hope so. Let's speak it. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil was taken away in Christ in the anointing. But even to this day, when Moses is read a veil lies on their what? Hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil or the covering is taken away. That means things are being exposed. Listen, that when things are exposed, you see, don't you? Amen. And it says, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? There is freedom, but we all with unveiled faces beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, when someone turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil or the covering is removed and the exposure of emotional strongholds is revealed to allow the Holy Spirit to take possession so a person can get free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Nothing else. Nothing else. There's no freedom unless the Spirit of the Lord is there. Amen? So everything must be an exchanged out circumstance. We must begin to break down these things that are protecting these emotional attachments, especially that are involved in regret. Killer. You know, as he began to bring me through everything, I've, I began to see how regret is attached to Almost every harmful emotion. I thought, my gosh, what a source. It's a source of every harmful emotion. Regret. And people carry them with them. And they're before, you know, the end of the, the word tells my sin is always before me. That regret of sin. Because it's become sin now to an individual. Because it's opened the door to the presence of evil. And that's where sin is. Amen. Listen, everybody's made a mistake. But if you're still holding on to those things that you don't even know about, and the reason why the people are still holding on to them because they've never gone to the source or the origination of regret. You must go to the origination of where it occurred. Put the blood there, repent it, break its hold, its attachments, and get rid of it. Walk away from it. In other words, so then when it tries to come up, it's not harmful. You just walk over it. You just move it out of your way. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5. Remember, we're trying to get the Holy Spirit to come into every part of our life and being to take possession. Second Corinthians 5. Ooh, we're right there. In verse 16. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things that have passed away, behold, all things have become New. Wow. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation. <laughs> Let me just share with you, first of all, reconciliation to a righteous creator. That means he's calling his people to him. 
Amen. That's reconciliation. It involves a process of conversion, regeneration, and sanctification. It involves a process of conversion, regeneration, and sanctification. In other words, there's boundaries, there's good boundaries that is between the old man and the new man. There is boundaries set between the flesh, the soul, and the spirit. So that you and I recognize these things. Because so many people are still living out of the soul. And they're being bound into the soul by the emotion of regret. The stronghold of regret. They can't come out of the soul. That's why you notice some people are more soulish than others. Because there's more emotional bondages there. Trying to make something good that can't be. <laughs> it's not going to work. Hallelujah. Emotional attachments attempting to, these are, um, and the boundaries between the old man and the new man, these emotional attachments are always attempting to cross over these boundaries that <laughs> we've created ourselves and our own memories from sentimental things, sentimental reasons, sentimental emotions. We've created them ourselves, so we put boundaries and protections around them. And not realizing that we're trying to carry them into the new life. And it's affecting our new life. It brings oppression. It brings heaviness. People can't be consistent. Because they're always led by how they feel. What are people thinking of me? Instead of who cares? It's all that matters is what God says about me. Amen? They can't reach that place. And these things there, they're held in the memory and the flesh. Romans 7, that's where they're stored. Or what we call the soulish, the soul in the flesh. Is everybody okay? Romans 7, 21. Overcoming regret. You know, the first thing I got to do is recognize that it's regret. You know, why? What's still holding me? Why am I still not growing? Why am I thirsty and hungry? Why am I not getting revelation? Why am I still manifesting? Why am I still reacting? Why am I still in bondage? Verse 21. Let's speak it. I find in a law that is evil, that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my what? My mind or my thoughts. Bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my memories, in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God and with the flesh the law of sin. These are harmful thoughts that bring captivity that are carnal and they cross over into the new man. And they prevent a new man from growing. They bring contamination. They can bring harm because these emotions are preventing individuals from progressing. And these emotions are associated with regrets. Everybody has regrets. But you cannot bring those regrets into the new life. Those are bound strongholds, binding the mind Preventing individuals to see things. You know, do you ever get around people that are, can I, uh, I don't know, how, how can I explain? They're not detailed. They can't see things. They can't see things through. Why didn't you see that? It's right in front of you. Because they're bound. Does everybody understand that? There's a bond, bondage there. Why? Because bondage pre is, brings blindness too. There's only certain, there's a length of sight that's available. They can't see things through. They can't hear things through. They can't perceive things through. These are hindrances and limitations that the enemy puts on individuals through emotional strongholds associated with regret. 
Regret is the number one emotional stronghold that accesses me and you that we carry. Hallelujah. Where does fear come from? Regret. Heaviness, oppression, regret. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. And 2 Corinthians 7. We must take the time and look at all the areas that we regret. And there are things that we still re we're going to still regret, but they're not going to affect you. Because when the emotions are busted from those, and you know the origination and its source, it's broke. It may come up, but it won't affect you. We all have regrets. Things in what we did, marriages, children, everything, all things of mistakes and failures and things we didn't do and things we should have done and things that we knew better to do and, you know, whatever. There's a recap. I mean, welcome to the earth. Amen? But when you break these loose, you'll find yourself that it will try and come, but it will have no effect. None. And then you won't believe the lie, that stronghold lie. See, people can't discern. They can't discern whether it's a demon or the flesh. They can't discern whether it's in the soul or the flesh. They can't discern it. So they just react because of that stronghold. It's an emotional stronghold that reacts. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 9. Let's speak it. Now rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to what? Repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces what? Repentance. Leading to what? Salvation. Is salvation associated with freedom? Yeah. Not to be what? Regretted. <clears throat> but the sorrow of the world produces what? Death. For observe the very thing that you sorrow in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourselves. What indignation. What fear. What vehement desire. What zeal. What vindication. And all things you proved yourself to be clear in this matter. Wow. Wow. Therefore, although I wrote to you, I did not do it for the sake of him who had done the wrong, nor for the sake of him who suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear to you. Godly sorrow, there's a difference, or worldly sorrow. Godly sorrow produces repentance and life. Worldly sorrow produces death. See, people are sorry because they got caught. That's not godly sorrow. That's worldly sorrow. Man, I got caught. Now they may repent afterwards. Hallelujah. They have flood. Hallelujah. <coughs> Let it rain. Glory. So again, the, and, and regret is a critical way of thinking or feeling in which you blame yourself. Amen? In which you blame yourself for the things you've done, you've chose, you didn't do, neglected, agreed with, promoted. Even if you remember them or you don't remember them. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, the enemy knows regret can kill unless it is overcome. One of the things we have to do is forgive ourselves. You know, people have a hard time to forgive themselves. You got to confess it. You can't think it. It must come out of your mouth. You must forgive yourself 
Amen? And others, recognizing the origination where things originated from and took place, and the attachments of all people, places, and things. Again, I've shared already that bad habits are harmful. They are reactions of this emotion. It promotes and maintains an open door to the demonic control. The enemy sets traps for regret every single day. Every day. He sets traps for regret. In Philippians 3, Oh, happy days. Freedom is coming. We're going to kick regret out and allow the spirit to live there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, so many people take chastening as regret or punishment. When God brings correction, people are offended. How many all know offense will bring regret? You can't hold on to nothing. In fact, we're not supposed to hold on to nothing. The only thing we're supposed to hold on to is Jesus. Amen? His promises and his covenant. And his presence. Yeah. Philippians 3.12. Let's speak it. He says, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, what? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. You cannot forget those things unless they're under the blood. Amen? Anything that's not under the blood is still activated. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this way of thinking. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind or same way of thinking. You know, exposing these sentimental boundaries or protective boundaries of regret and all the emotional attachments to regret is an everyday process because you must know the trap of the enemy. See, if you don't know about him trying to set up a trap of regret, then you're going to step into it. Amen? So now we know it. We know that regret is an area where you and I have made decisions and we're going to regret it. So why make a decision if you don't know the right one to make? Quit assuming. It's a simple thing. And don't worse first think. You know what that's from? Regret. That's why people worse first think. Why? Because they got regret associated with it. They can't go positive. They're negative. Now, don't get me wrong. There are things where, where God warns us of things that are going to happen. But don't be ignorant of the fact that the enemy's trying to snare you. Amen? We must know these things. We must be ready. The Bible says be ready in season and out. Some people are not even in season. They're not even seasoned. Hallelujah. Colossians 3. Overcoming regret. Can you overcome regret? Yes. First, you got to expose it. Amen? You got to recognize it. <clears throat> Glory. Don't hope in regret either, let me tell you that. There's no hope in regret. 
Somebody understand that. People are still having hope in something that they're regretting. It will never come to pass. Never. Until that's cut loose. Verse 1, Colossians 3. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts on the things of above, not the things of the earth. In other words, you're living from the future again, not from your past. You're living from the future to the present. You are living by what God says, not by what your emotions say. Not by what the world says. Not by what the mirror says. Not by what your diet says. Hello? Praise God. You're living by what God says. You know what? When you do that, everything changes. Including your diet. Praise God. Verse 3. For you died. Everyone said, I died. Hallelujah. Congratulations. <laughs> For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And you can't take regret with you there. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire. Evil desire. Is regret associated with an evil desire? Yes. And covetousness, which is idolatry, quit protecting it. Because of these things, the wrath of God has come upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger. Did anybody ever get angry when you found out about regret? Uh, you, in other words, you did something, you regretted it, and then you got angry. Everyone has. It's called react. I can't believe I did that again. I can't believe it either. But now yourselves are to put off all these things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on a new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, nor circumcision, nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free. But Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, throw it in the garbage. Even as Christ forgave you, you should also, you must also. Amen? But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Love, living outside violent earth. Praise God. Ephesians 4. Regret hinders your new identity. It holds you. I know many people that are still bound by regret. They have a hard time forgiving individuals. Or themselves. And they're oppressed. They're miserable. And they can't progress. Because it brings limitations. Ephesians 4. Verse 20. But you've not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus that you what? Put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to its deceitful lusts and desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your new mind, that you put on the new man, that you expose all emotional garbage that's hindering you which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be what? 
Be angry. That's righteous anger. And don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give, nor give, nor give, nor invite the devil. Hello. Don't give place to the devil. You know, when you react in the flesh, you gave place to the devil. He doesn't need to enter you. He can manifest right through you from the outside. Just by what? An emotional bondage. You know, I'm telling you, it blew me away when the Lord shared with me. There are those who don't think they don't have a devil, and they do. And those who think they do, that they don't. I thought, wow. It's all because of emotional attachments. Hallelujah. Let's grow a little further. Is everybody okay? Okay, good. Let's, uh, verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Because he just explained everything that's going to grieve the Holy Spirit. Of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness. I mean all regret can fall into bitterness. Amen. And bitterness into regret. Wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave. You. Again, it goes back to that forgiveness. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Is everybody okay? Places of regret that <laughs> await us every single day. But we must become joined with the eternal way of thinking in everything we do. That's why it's so important to know the word. We must be joined with the eternal way of thinking. Not the temporary way of thinking, not the carnal way of thinking, but the eternal way of thinking. Regret will bring you back to carnal way of thinking. Again, there are areas where we regret for some of the things we've done, but we've cut them loose and they're no longer affecting us. Amen? There's no longer a stronghold in that. There's no longer a reaction. There's a response. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 8, verse 18. You know, learning these things is bringing us through, allowing us to constantly exchange the old character and the old integrity, <laughs> the carnal integrity, with the new. Anything that's being held prevents us from going forward. All of these things. Emotion is, a, you know, the soulish realm is, remember, the spirit communes with God. The soul interprets. If the soul isn't converted sufficiently, it has false interpretations, false perceptions. That's why the soul must be converted. It must reach a level of conversion where interpretation, what God is saying, is correct. See, because the flesh loves to interfere with all of these things. The old man loves to interfere with all of these things. That's why God is bringing us through that process. Like I shared before, he said that he was bringing the whole body through deliverance. Well, people need to get delivered from the spirit of regret. Romans 8, 18, let's speak it. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed Where? In us. So everything's going to get driven out. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. 
For why does still one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance or endurance. All of these things are not worthy to be, to be compared to who we are, not who we were. Amen? It's who we are, not who we were. And these, this is where those areas of emotionals are, are always before us trying to tell us who we were. These emotional attachments, and especially in the regret, bringing us to the place of who we were, but not who we are. That's where that battle is. Colossians chapter 2. I also really believe that areas in this regret prevent people from getting healed. Because it's an emotional blockage. Remember, the enemy doesn't want you to be free. Because he fears us being free. We're more dangerous the more free we are. Colossians 2.20 Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic what? Principles of the world. Why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not what? Touch. Do not taste. Do not handle. Which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of Man, the, oh, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. In other words, stop subjecting yourself to the carnal way of thinking. That's traditions of men. Amen? Come on to there. We need to align ourselves and join ourselves to the way of thinking in the eternal 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 4. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Love suffers long. And it's kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in the iniquity. But rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, they will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man or mature, I put away childish things. You know, this may sound strange, but that bondage of regret is childish. It's childish. We should never be bound by those things. If we're living from the future, forgiveness is always the first thing. Going to the source and destroying it. And being discerning and sensitive enough that knowing regret will bring a great struggle, great stumbling block, will bring strongholds and memory, strongholds, and will bring an area to where we cannot progress. People who are not progressing probably because of regret and don't even know it. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? <clears throat> Let's go a little further. Um... For now we see, in verse 12, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in power, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 3. Verse 
Regret. Overcoming regret. Again, the first thing you got to do is know that, recognize it. I know that's what the enemy's trying to snare us to. In verse 1, 1 John 3, 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed. What shall we be? But we shall know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Did Jesus ever regret? No. Now, one time he regretted he made it man. He made created man, and uh, killed everybody. You know, with the flood, <laughs> and only eight of them made it. <laughs> so you never want God to regret about you. <laughs> Thank God for mercies. <laughs> Amen. But Jesus never regretted. Never. Even when he went to the Father, Father, if possible, let this pass me by. But he didn't regret his decision. Never. Amen. Listen, every one of us has fallen into a place of regret. But don't let it hold you. Don't bring it into the future with you. Sever it. Cut loose of it. Get rid of it. It doesn't matter. It has no effect, only what you allow it to. Amen? That's why it must be cut loose. Verse 3, And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he, as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. So in other words, as we abide more and more in him, these things will become more sensitive, more discerning, and more seeable. Amen. Remember, his presence is everything for me and you. That's something the, the world just doesn't get yet. In fact, it's something that many people in the body of Christ still don't get yet. They think that just being saved is it. No, that's not it. There's the process, amen? There's a process of conversion. There's a process of regeneration. And there's a process of sanctification. And that's what God is bringing the whole body through. It's called deliverance. Hallelujah. So that everything can be relieved, removed, and more freedom. You know, we sing that song, New Wine. We're exchanging the old flame for a new fire. You won't get the new fire if these things are still attached and preventing. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We give you all the glory and honor and praise for your word tonight. And we thank you for exposing that spirit of regret that tries to hinder us. And Lord, we just go to every area of regret in our life. And we sever all emotional attachments with them. And we ask, Lord, that you'll bring to our remembrance those areas that you specifically want us to go to. So we can go to the origination, cut it loose, and be free in your name, in your glory, and in your honor, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed and kill regret.